Welcome fellow recovering traditionalists to episode 151. What do students need to know about division? Before I start this episode, remember I've decided to add a positive comments area to the podcast. With all the negativity that's out there, it's nice to hear nice things. Uh, Plus, it's a way for me to acknowledge and share what great things you all are out there doing to help build math minds. When I get emails and comments on the YouTube channel that are thank yous, it always brightens my day. So if anything that I've done has helped you or your students out, please email in and let us know. It's info at buildmathminds.com. This week's positivity comes from Molly. Molly posted this in the chat at the end of our recent math strategy session about compensation. Wow, I learned so much today. Thank you. I'm excited to attend the upcoming sessions. Rosalba Serrano and I had a great time doing that first session. If you missed it, the recording is now inside the Build Math Minds PD site for our members, which you can join at buildmathminds.com BMM. But we also still have more sessions where we are investigating other math strategies. During each session, we play around with a specific math strategy that kids use for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. You'll learn how the strategy works and what types of math situations help kids see the usefulness of the strategy. We also provide a resource to help you get started using word problems, number routines, and games for that specific strategy. And it's all for free. You can register at buildmathminds.com slash strategy dash sessions. And as always, I'll have everything I mentioned linked up over at the show notes page at buildmathminds.com slash 151. Welcome to Build Math Minds, the podcast, where fidelity to your students is greater than fidelity to your textbook. I'm your host, Christina Tonnevold, the recovering traditionalist and buildmathminds.com founder, where my mission is to change the way we teach elementary math to our kiddos. So are you ready to start building math minds and not just creating calculators? Let's get started. In this week's episode, we are taking a look at the essential understandings that kids need for division. And we're not going to look at all of them, but we're going to talk about one in particular. If you aren't familiar with the Essential Understanding series by the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics, those books should definitely be something you look into getting. There's actually two different series of the Essential Understandings. The original series is Developing Essential Understandings, and those books detail out what the essential understandings are for all the math concepts in pre-K through second. It's not, I'm so used to saying pre-K through second. It's actually pre-K through 12th grade. Uh, I believe there are like 30 of those books. And then after those books were written, the next series came out, which was a, is putting essential understandings into practice. Now, those books detail how to help students build the understandings in the classroom. You are given tasks to use, and then you also investigate student work samples from those tasks to better understand how children develop their understandings. I'll add links to both of those series in the show notes, which is, again, buildmathminds.com 151. Now, this week, I was looking back through the book, Putting Essential Understandings of Multiplication and Division into Practice, 3 through 5, trying to find things to share with you in this podcast. I actually have quite a few little sticky notes throughout that book now, just from looking back through it this week. But the reason I picked the one for today was because of something that kind of kept coming up in the math strategy session that Rosalba and I did last weekend. In the first math strategy session, Rosalba was focused on the compensation strategy. That's like the broad term and can really look different with different types of problems, but generally it's when kids change one or sometimes both of the numbers to make the problem a bit nicer to deal with, and then they have to compensate for whatever change they did. A few examples include like when you're solving 18 plus 26 and a student decides to change the 18 to a 20, and so to compensate for that, they decide I'm gonna take two from the 26 and just give it to the 18. So now I've got the problem as 20 plus 24. But on that same problem, another kid might change the 18 to a 20, but 
add that 20 to the original 26, and now they've got an answer of 46. And then they do the compensating or subtracting out that extra two at the end. Now those strategies look different, but the mathematics they are doing is exactly the same, just in different order. They are both compensation strategies. For multiplication, that strategy, a compensation strategy might involve, like if you're doing 19 times eight, a kid might decide, I wanna do 20 times eight, that would be easier. But then they need to compensate for having too many groups of eight, right? So if <laughs> I know this is quick and it's on a podcast, but hopefully some of that made sense. Now, throughout the strategy session, Rosalba spent time looking at this strategy with addition, subtraction, and multiplication with all different sets of numbers, whole numbers, decimals, fractions. But one thing kind of kept coming up. What does this strategy look like with division? Now, typically kids don't actually use this strategy to solve a division problem, but they do use it to help them get started which is what we talked about in the live strategy session. You could think through this with any division problem, but for the sake of us kind of being on the same page, let's use a sample problem of 2,753 divided by 29. Kids aren't going to find the exact answer using compensation, but they often use their understanding of compensation to think something like this. That problem is kind of close to 3,000 divided by 30. So my answer is going to be close to 100, but it's actually gonna be less than 100 because I have more in the total than I had in the original problem, right? I thought that was kind of a good explanation, but we still had some people throughout the session who just kept asking about division. And it wasn't until I was reading back through this Essential Understandings book about multiplication and division, and a line in, in it made me think, Maybe this was why. And I don't know, maybe it wasn't, but it, may, it may, gave me pause to think about it. On page 55, they list out a couple of essential understandings that relate to division. And essential understanding 1E states, division is defined by its inverse relationship with multiplication. And I think that's a part that not everyone sees. Division isn't supposed to be seen as a whole separate operation. It is defined by its inverse relationship with multiplication. Now that's not the only definition of, of division, but it's one of the essential understandings we need to get kids to understand. Students need to understand the meanings of division and multiplication and how they relate to each other. They should not be taught separately. Yet our textbooks do teach it separately and so as teachers, we feel like it needs to be. I believe that's why so many teachers on that live session kept asking for more info about how to do this strategy with division. What does this look like with division? But the answer is, you really don't use it with division. You help kids develop it for multiplication and help them see how multiplication and division are connected. And then they will naturally use this idea of compensation to help them make sense of division problems. They won't necessarily use it to help them get to the answer, but they will use it to help them make sense of the problem before them, if the numbers lend towards compensation. On pages 55 through 56, they go on to write, Mulligan and Mitchell Moore, 1997, explain that the term multiplicative describes situations that lead to either multiplication or division, and that every multiplication situation can lead to various division problems. Therefore, students can develop an understanding of the meaning of multiplication and division at the same time. Students can make connections between multiplication and division as they quote unquote, think multiplication when working with division. Students should not simply identify some problems as multiplication problems and others as division problems. However, this view is at odds with the typical approach to multiplication and division in U.S. textbooks, which commonly introduce multiplication and division in separate chapters. When students focus on a single problem type or operation, they often limit their thinking to the strategy of the day while fi failing to make important connections with other ideas. So whether or not you were in that strategy session, 
I want this episode to remind you that the teaching of mathematics should be about helping our students build connections. Division is not separate from multiplication. They should be intertwined. And when we build an understanding with students on how to use compensation with multiplication, they will naturally use those ideas to help them with division. It's not a separate thing. Mathematical concepts should not be taught in isolation. Even the strategies that we are discussing in these strategy sessions should not be done in isolations. We're, we're doing them at different times just because of time constraints, but we need kids to see them together. Different kids use different strategies on the same problems, but our goal is to help students see how those strategies are connected. One of the biggest things we need to help students to understand about division is its connection to multiplication. If your students are struggling with division, make sure your students are solid with multiplication and start working on building a connection between multiplication and division. All right, that's all for this week. So until next time, my fellow recovering traditionalists, keep building math minds. 